whether I accept it or not. Yep. It has nothing to do with, like he said. Yep, and he was talking to someone and said, that said that they just love to sleep all day, and just to avoid life, you know, uh -huh. all together. So just now when I was sitting there thinking about whether I should take a shower or not, I'm just like, I should just do it, just do it, you know, that's all you gotta do, is just do it, and then it'll be out of the way. Mm -hmm. There's no point in procrastinating it. There's no point in waiting in the morning because then I will cut my time in half because I won't have as much time when I could just do it now. Right. So I felt like, you know, I'm sitting there lying in bed and I'm just like, I don't know if I'm going to take a shower. And then it just goes through my head, just do it. And I just jump up and I take a five minute shower and jump out, you know, mm -hmm. and get it done. And you probably wouldn't have taken that little time in the morning. Yeah, I probably would have taken longer. Because, because you I had more time or whatever. Yeah, because I was tired or whatever. But right. I just felt like do it, get it over with. Right. That's why I'm gonna go to sleep because I need to just do it. <laughs> yeah, what's that time say over there? 2.15 I bet. Move about. your head so I can see it. You could just move your head. Well, the blanket and my boots right now. Alright, well, yeah, the class didn't get out was until like, what, 12.30? Yep, 12.40 or so. 12.40 today? Then well. he had us be mute for a whole half an hour, which is really weird. We took, yeah, we had to be silent for half an hour after it. Crystal and I were trying to communicate in with no language. Words. Yeah. We we kept we kept laughing. We kept laughing. Very funny. And um, I wanted to text message you. Yeah. But I was like, eh, don't want to waste that twenty. When? When when we couldn't talk. You shouldn't have text messaged me. You should have just wrote on your text message and showed it to me. That's true. <laughs> were you really thinking of sending it to me? Well, in the in the grocery store, no. I was just thinking about typing it then. But when I was. When we were when when we were when we were in the car on the way to Smith's, I was gonna text message you and say, "So are you gonna text message Kurt tonight?" And then I realized it was only for half an hour, not for the whole night. Yeah. Anyways, I'm tired too, so I'm gonna write my journal and go to bed. All right, tomorrow is a nine o'clock in the morninger until midnight, probably again. That's ridiculous. I hope we get a bunch of breaks because. From 5 to midnight, we only get one half an hour break. I mean, it's good, because the class is good. But you just feel like you want a little bit more pee breaks. And, but know. see, like, 5 to 12, that's only like a 6, 7 hour shift. 7. And for a 7 hour shift at work, you only get a half an hour break. Yeah, that's true. But I guess if you're a smoker, you that might be really difficult. A 9, or an eater, <laughs> or a peer. Yeah. From 9 to midnight, that's a... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hour. So we better get a break every three Isn't hours. Isn't that crazy? I wonder how many people are going to be okay with that. You know, like, they're like, oh my goodness. I wonder how many people are going to know that it starts at 9 a.m. Because they kept saying morning, but I don't know if anybody really got the Well, the we do have schedules. They got schedules. Exactly. They should know. I really that girl left. Yep. I noticed that. The first thing I noticed when I walked in, I didn't see her. And the Alex guy that I was talking about. The one that was in my group? No, he was in my group. Alex Did you guys miss some, somebody from your group? Yeah, we had one person missing, I think. Who was it? 
I don't know, this guy that reminded me of Chandler on Friends. Oh, really? Yeah, he really reminded me of him. His effort, like, the looks really kind of go, but not that well, you know? Yeah, the guy who is Alex reminded me of Chris. Like, the way he dressed and the way he was all acting all... Yeah. Like, every time anybody was crying or getting upset or something, he's like, it's okay, it's okay. Don't cry, you know. Oh, so I heard about Katie's... Like, me and Katie were partners uh -huh. for... For the victim and the, um, you know. Yeah. She was telling me about how her husband raped her and all that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. She was getting into it and I was like, oh my god. Is that why she was all hugging you and stuff? Yeah. You guys are all close now. I don't, I don't understand why. She was, she feels like a mom to me, but she looks so young that I'm just like, you're like a sister, but she acts like a mom. Do you know what I mean? Like Same she all, sunshine. you know, loving and everything. Yeah. Because I was telling her, I told her about Tyler and I told her about dad. And, like, when I was telling her about Dad, she was just, you know, looking at me like, oh, I'd hate to see my... I could tell that she was thinking, oh, I'd hate to see my son go through that, you know. Or, you know, you could just tell. And she was just like, it's So okay. did she stand up that you were a victim? Yeah. How were you a victim with Tyler? I just said, oh, a victim. I guess I really wasn't a victim. I don't think she stood up when, when, when I told her about Tyler's death. But when it came to whose fault it was, what was that called? Accountability. The what? Accountability. Yeah. Who was accountable for it. Uh -huh. I was telling her that I felt like I could have done something more to help him. Uh -huh. Like I could have put him, helped him go through rehab or I could have told him that drugs were wrong or uh -huh. told somebody that he was suicidal. Uh -huh. But I just kept my mouth shut and just, you know, we didn't talk for a year or whatever, you know. Uh -huh. So I felt like I was accountable for not being able to help him when I knew I could. So she didn't stand when you said that you were a victim? Yeah, because I really wasn't a victim. I was just telling her stories, you know what I mean? Because I wasn't going, oh, well, he did this to me. It was more like, yeah, I just had a boyfriend. I felt bad. Her. Yeah. Yeah. And so you told her about Dad at what, at what part? I don't know. Like, we just kind of, like, I just started, you know, going on. I'm like, I just don't, I, I don't really like to deal with deaths because, you know, if I, my father died when I was 11 and we were really close, so it was really hard for me to let him go, you know? Mm -hmm. So she was just like... She was just like, oh, really? And she was like, how long did he have cancer for? And I'm like, well, you know, they said he was only going to live for six months, but he really lived for two years. And she was just like, oh, really? You know, she was all into it. And it was only a year. Was it only a year? Yeah, he died a year after he was diagnosed. Really? Mm -hmm. He was. Oh, wow, okay. He was diagnosed while Rosanna was... Pregnant with Nicole? Pregnant yeah, that's with true. Nicole. Okay, I could have remembered that. But he still had the odds, you know? Yeah. Which was really cool that he got to <sighs> stay longer than he thought, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm tired. Okay. Good night. Alright. Tonight was the third night mm -hmm. of our journey experience. What's today? July 9th? I believe so. Tomorrow's the 10th. It was the best experience that I've had yet. It really was. Because we had fun. That's that's the biggest. We got to dance a little, and we got to cry a little, a lot. <laughs> I cried like as soon as we got in there, because they put on that music, and then tears just started coming out at 9 a.m. in the morning. The first time we had the music. At 9 a.m. in the morning, and tears started coming out. Mm -hmm. When they were playing the, the at the Beyond very time? beginning. The no, Beyond no, 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 no. Oh, when we were supposed to reflect. Yeah. They said, close your eyes. You know, breathe in, breathe out. And I was just, just all these just emotions came out of me. Tonight, Crystal and I had one of the best experiences in our lives, or so I should say, my life, because. I'm glad I got to experience today with you. I'm glad I got to experience all this with you. Mm -hmm. Because, Mom. Is that current? Please don't be mad. There's no point to be mad. You sound upset. Why do you think I didn't call you back? Yes, you do. Get me off the camera. Because I don't want to be filmed right now. Staring me mad. Uh -huh. He's just like this between you and me, not your mom.
Do you know what I mean? Well, no, I wasn't trying to, no, I know. Tell I know. to calm we... down. I just wanted you to share your experience with them because once I shared my experience with Jeremy today, it changed everything from his opinion. Because he heard me crying. The first thing he did was I, I heard the sound of his voice when I called him and I cried. And and when he heard me crying, he's like, is this thing going all right for you? And I'm like, I started laughing. I'm like, it sounds like it's not, huh? He's like, yeah, are you okay? Are you, are you wanting to quit? What's wrong, you know? I'm like, babe, this is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. No, like, Herb was interested in too, but, like, I just caught him at the wrong time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, is there any way for you to be able to just, you know, walk away and talk to me? He's like, well, I'm in the car, so. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, then just call me when you get to where you're going. Then he called me back, and we talked for a little bit more, and then mm -hmm. you call him, and I was like, you know what, just let me call you when I ready to go to bed, because... You know, I just, I just see that when he goes through his dis detachments, uh -huh. he just seems to get, when he gets detached, detached from yeah. his attachments like you. Yeah, he is attached to me, so when he gets detached, he doesn't have me to hold on to. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when he misses me, he expresses it out of anger. Instead of out of loving and missing, he just goes, so uh, why don't you, you know, why aren't you calling me, you know? And I'm just right. like, babe, you know? You gotta understand that it's like college where you gotta sit here if you're doing what you wanna do, mm -hmm. you have to make some sacrifices, you know. Mm -hmm. I still have this stupid headache. Do you? Yes. Since yesterday? Since the past three days, right? Whatever, Four you said days. didn't have the headache anymore yesterday. Yeah, it keeps going away and it'll come back. Like I'll I'll take those deep breaths and you know, make it go away. It's the and crying. Everything. Yes, exactly. It's something that as soon as I start crying, it just starts pounding. It's because your brain's telling you, oh, I'm not supposed to cry. You gotta get used to crying. Mm -hmm. You're allergic to crying. Yeah, exactly. Get over your allergy. Get over your sickness. Your sickness is just a grungy. Your grungy is just a way for you to avoid the situation. You don't want to cry because you want you don't, you feel like if you don't cry, then you won't have to feel the grungy. Okay, so talk about your experience, Crystal. Mm -hmm. Can I look at myself real quick to see how ugly I am so I have an idea? Okay, now my belief isn't so bad. It's a reality. Hold it back a little more. You got me all zoomed up, don't you? Huh? I'm so zoomed up. Hold it back a little more. Who are you I don't know how to... Closer. Don't zoom in. Shut up. Zoom out. Okay. 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 There you are. That's better. That, that way I know. My experience today? Oh my goodness. Do I have to go over this again? I just might end up crying again. But yes, I want it on videotape. Explain how it all happened. Okay, last night we played a game called the Red and Black Game. I don't remember if we talked about it on our videotape last night, but... Anyways, the Red and Black Game was a tricky game because there was no winners. I mean, there was no win... It wasn't a win-lose situation. It wasn't a win-kind-of-lose game. Competitive. It was supposed to be a win-win game, but we didn't know that was the object of the game. You know, to make everybody win-win. So anyways, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. When we chose the leaders of the game, nobody volunteered for our team leader. I volunteered. Nobody said, hey, let's look at these qualities or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to make this song story short. I'm sorry. Okay, so our team ended up not winning. In fact, neither team won, and it was a huge disappointment in myself and a huge disappointment in my team and I thought that me and my I'm wanting to read you my thoughts in the red and black game because it's just the same thing you know what I mean? okay so now you know what the red and black game is let me just read to you what the game was all about I want close to do this well, I read a black game. Okay. The one you wrote this morning. 
I didn't say very much. Huh? I didn't say very much. I wrote like four sentences, three sentences. Yeah, me too. But it was enough to get what you really thought about, right? No, just that I'm a follower, but I wanted to be a leader. I'm just allowed you read your stuff. That's why I gave you a drill. I wanted to be the leader, even though I didn't understand for a minute how numbers were added. I didn't feel confident that I knew my math as well as others noticed. I disappointed myself, I disappointed my peers, my peers and I disappointed Royce. I have a feeling of sadness because of my failure. This shows up in my life because when I know someone is more qualified for the position, I back off from what I think I know, and I'm no longer a leader. That's what I wrote. So anyways, he said, all right, we're going to form the line with these chairs, and everyone, when there's an empty chair, go rush, you know, blah, 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 we got to go. Basically, we have to go talk about our experience with the red and black king. So, I ran up because I wanted to talk about my controlling leadership issues. That was what I wanted to talk about. I control my husband, I push him away, I drive others, my family and my mom and everyone, I drive them away with my, my pushing issues. Um, so I ran to the chair and these chairs are going to be released in a certain order. Anyways, I sat in the third chair, so that means I was going to be the third to speak. Well, technically the fourth to speak. And as I sat in the third chair, I noticed I didn't have my name badge. And that was really scary for me. And I didn't not I didn't want to be confronted about why I let myself not have my name badge on. So I wouldn't let myself be in that position. And I went and I found my name tag. It took me a couple tries, but I finally found it, and I felt relieved, and I felt ready to go. So by the time I went up there, I just started talking about the Ryan Black game. I talked about how I was the leader, and I feel like I always need to be the leader because of my brothers and sisters, and how my mom left when my dad, and she was so flaky, and my dad was very depressed, and so I ended up changing my little sister Calissa's diapers, and then I pointed at Calissa in the audience. And at that time... Said that I was an ugly baby. <laughs> at that time, we were both already in tears because of... The divorce. The divorce, yeah. That's one big thing. And me trying to grow up at seven years old is just crazy. And so I, um... I start crying. Calissa starts crying. Yeah, I make the comment that she was an ugly baby because of me. Because of mom not being there and dad not knowing how to take care of kids and me just being seven years old no not knowing how to dress her any better than I dress my dolls and everyone laughed and chuckled and it was true you were so ugly <laughs> and you know you were ugly I know I was and then you know it wasn't your fault because mom wasn't you could have been cute if you just would have had a cute dress and had a mom. cute hairdo yeah without peanut butter in your hair and snot in your nose and stuff Okay, so, he says, okay, when did you feel like you had to grow up? And I'm like, seven years, seven years old. He says, when did you think you began adolescence? And thinking back on this now, I began adolescence when I was 13, just like I said. When I blew the candles out on my 13th birthday, everyone cheered and said, oh boy, now you're going to be a teenager and you're going to rebel and you're not going to listen and you're going to have an attitude and you're going to think you know everything and I was terrified of feeling like a teenager. I didn't want to be a teenager. I'd, ra <coughs> I'd rather be the grown up mom figure in my brothers and sisters life rather than the one that screws up and the one that my parents don't approve of and whatever. And so I look back <coughs> at now when Rosanna came into the picture and mom left permanently, you know, like when mom went off with Ramon, I was 12 years old. 12 years old? I was 11 years old, huh? I was 11 years old when we lived with Rosanna permanently, basically, right? 
I think it was 11 years old. 11 or 12. Just explain right, it. Seven. Okay. Anyways, I was no longer having to be the mom, and that made me mad at Rosanna. You see how that works? Yeah. Because now I had to be a kid, and even she says that. She says that now to me, that she tried to just let me be a kid, right? And she would tell my dad to just let me be a kid. But I was mad at her for not letting me be an adult, because that's what I was used to being. And I was mad at her for taking over my position of the mom in my dad's eyes, or whatever. Anyway, um, so I turned a teenager when I was 13. So I went from being a, a kid, a little kid, to a mom, to a big kid, to a teenager. And so I was still trying to grow up very fast trying to go back to that mom place and it's even still now when I'm like married and have a horrible marriage because I can't seem to figure out what it is is wrong with my marriage and figure out what I want with it I still want to be a mom and that fucked out yeah. it's funny and that's why I involve myself so much in Ashley's life you know right mm -hmm. that's why I try to involve myself in whenever I come over to my mom's house I'm like Alyssa come hang out with me or Rebecca come come do my dishes you know I want it I want that Camaraderie with a daughter, like, like I didn't get with my mom. I, I did a little bit, but not a lot that I wish I would have. All right, so you see how I'm squinting my eyes? It's because my eyes hurt so much from crying. If I open them big, I could open them big for a little bit, and then they start to sting. Okay, stop. <sighs> Sorry. Start explaining. Say get direct. <laughs> stop procrastinating. Get direct. Okay. So, I'm up there, he says, okay, so when do you, Chris says, Crystal, when do you think you had, when do you think you became an adult? That's what he said. I looked back to my first beer. I looked back to the day I got married. I looked back to the time I lost my virginity. I looked back to the time I discovered I didn't want Taco Bell anymore. I looked back to the time when I decided I might not want Jeremy anymore. I looked back when I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I looked back when I decided to work with my mom. All of these things. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just like, giving all these examples of when I when I was thinking I might be an adult at that point. But I know that a huge shift for me when it came from being a teenager to an adult was when I was 17 years old. And he says, "Well, why is that?" And it's because a lot of things happened when I was 17. He says, "Like what?" And I said, "That was the year my dad died." And, of course, I'm bawling and sobbing and just, <laughs> well, maybe not that much, but enough to, like, really be embarrassed in front of all these groups of people. I can't have 45 people in the room. And it turns out that, um, the reason why I've been so distant between my relationships and trying to be so controlling is because when my dad died, I never fully got over that hurt feeling of not being able to say what I wanted to tell him and feeling like I was the one who had to keep it together because I didn't have a right to feel pain if I was serious about what I said to him last year. Because a huge part of me was so, so serious about what I said to him a year before he died. But right now I want to take it all back, but I know that everything I felt that, that summer was so true to me at that moment. So I can't take that moment back, but I want to take back the pain I caused him. So when he died, I felt like I didn't deserve to fully remor remorse or, or that would conflict with the way I truly felt about him. Isn't so on to still. So Royce told me to let that go and to talk about my feelings and he asked me to choose somebody in the audience that reminded me of my father. And immediately Calissa and I both pointed to Royce, you, re you remind us of our father. And it was just so obvious because out of everybody there, not only does he kind of look like him, just kind of, not really, but Everything he sounds he says. like him. He feels like him. It just, it's just so dad. And I really do believe that dad and Royce. I just, 
said what I already know. I was going to say, I really do believe that Dad and Royce um, had, had a training together, but I went and asked him afterwards, and he said yes. What was I going to say? I really believe that Dad and Royce... Oh, are one person? That's what I was going to say. Freaky, huh? The last I started sucking, I was like... Okay, go on. Okay, I'm okay, glad so I'm not crying. Doing. Do you see how I'm over it? Mm -hmm. I'm not crying. I'm not getting all emotional about it because mm -hmm. I'm done with okay. it. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is the second time I told the story tonight because the first time I told Jeremy and I was sobbing. I was just, I was letting it go. Um, man, I look so ugly. Come on, just get it over with. I told Kurt I was gonna call him in 15 minutes. It's been 15 years. Yeah. Okay, so I'm starting to talk to, to Royce. He comes up, he says, tell me everything that you wanted to tell your dad before you died, before you died, blah, blah. And I tell my dad, I tell him, I cry to him, I fall and I'm saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he says, it's okay. And it goes like the way he looked at me. He looked at me like dad did, and tears came to Royce's eye. I made Royce cry. And that was the biggest, powerful thing to me in the world, to see he was crying for me. He was crying for dad, and that's what knew. That's when I knew he knew dad. Yeah. Is when he looked in my eyes and knew who I was talking about, knew who I missed, mm -hmm. and he missed dad too. That's what made me. That's he what, missed his own dad, I think. That's what gonged for me. Whatever, whatever it was, we had a connection, Royce and I, right? A connection like a father daughter would. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, he cried, and that's when I was like, I love you, dad. And he says, I love you too. Did you hear that when he said that? And I hugged him, and we hugged each other. Like, I, I hugged my dad, and the way he hugged me was so much like dad. And Calissa runs up on stage, and she hugs me too. And it was so powerful, that so hug. Powerful. And it was just so wonderful. We had people crying in the in the chairs, and it was just, people wow. People coming up and giving us oh, a hug. It was just awesome. And then, I was, oh. The booger we thought it was tears. done, okay. Yeah, boogers and tears. People are applauding. People are like, oh, awesome, right? Then, Royce picks me up like I'm his baby, or like I'm his wife taking her over the threshold, or whatever, right? And I'm like, oh shit, 145 pounds a year plus, or whatever, and I am heavy! And he says, hey guys, can I get a couple of guys to help me, right? And I was like, oh shit, so I start like, adjusting myself to not be so heavy for him. He's like, no, 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 lay back. Lay back and just put your head back. And that's what dad had me do. My dad would pick me up. Dad picked me up like that after he did the training. And he picked me up and he just had me lay back and just relax. And so, of course, I'm crying more because that reminded me of a time when dad picked me up like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so there was like six or seven pe guys holding her in a baby position, rocking her back and forth as sad music was playing. Or not very sad. It was just, just music, you know, that you listen to and hear the words and everything. Um... And then we had a couple of girls come up to hold her hand, and I came up and rubbed her forehead as she was just bawling. Me and it her was both the most bawling. It awesome experience in the world, and I bawled and bawled and let it all go, and I just had this beaming smile in my heart that it's just the most comfortablest place to have so much love around you and so much feeling of greatness and goodness when all you can do is just feel loved. There was, I don't know, if, I, don't, I, I think I might have thought about the judgments a couple times when I felt the boogers running down my nose and the mm -hmm. bubbles, you know, coming out of my nostrils. But it wasn't like, oh, God, you know, it was more like, oh, you accept me and, and dad misses me, but I miss him too. And that's all it is. And that's all it will be. Nothing to do with the bad and the, you know, the ugly and whatever. So anyways, they let me down and... I go sit down and it was awesome the way people looked at me and the way people connected with me they just knew they just got me and it was just so cool and when we were doing that hugging thing tonight mm -hmm. I feel like that's the reason why people liked me I feel like that's the reason why they they, they accepted me is because they connected to you a lot they connected better. to me when I went up there and shared my story and I had the best experience today than anybody and I know this because I was a witness to everyone's experience and nobody got that kind of wow you know nobody got that I mean there was a couple of similar situations but every time somebody went up there and started crying about how they want to be accepted did you hear that one girl she just want to be accepted you know yeah 
and then no one came up to her and hugged her and I was like I'm ready to go do it oh it was that Kathleen girl the one with pigtails oh yeah when she started saying she wanted to be accepted it's like no you don't you just want to you just want to be, so be fun again no that's what it wasn't about being accepted she just wanted to be fun again and she didn't think she could be fun while she was trying to grow up you know yeah. you notice how much fun she got after she was able to do all that in front of people and stuff mm -hmm. anyways it was the most awesome experience and I am a uh, Mormon American princess where I am just all about giving me give me what I want give me what I need because I deserve it and I'm special and if you don't give it to me I'm gonna throw a tantrum fit because I'm just like Aaron and I have noticed this ever since I met Aaron and that's why I'm done I'm done with that I'm gonna get rid of that so is it my turn now yep damn it it's hard to hurry and read me because you didn't read me the um, other two things that you wrote yeah right. whatever <laughs> Okay, that's what who I am. What are you gonna do? Huh? What are you gonna do? Okay, it's the homework thing. I am a follower, and no matter what my idea was, I followed someone else who I thought made, who was more experienced. I felt that I could have been the follower, but I didn't speak up, of course, even if I really wanted it. What was your true experience of that? Because you, you did, you did lead a lot when it came to that well, game. Well, I explained my my thoughts on some of the ideas, and I didn't really get to... Calissa was the mathematician. She was my assistant in help leading me, and so every time she had a mathematical... Um, I somehow convinced guess, the whole... <laughs> you convinced everybody. You were a very good convincer, and then... When you changed your mind, you had a lot of people disappointed in you. Yeah, exactly. I felt so bad because I go, there got to be something, some kind of trick to it. So why not just follow the people who's already played it before? You know. Right. So that's why I just played, you know, followed it. But anyways. Yeah, she was more of a follower than she was a leader. But she acted like a leader in the beginning, and then she decided to go with her follower mm -hmm. because there was people that were more qualified, just like yep. me. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So anyways, my experience tonight was the whole thing with Crystal. It was just, it was just awesome, right? Also, there was another time when he let the people who have not spoken up in the class at all, like whatsoever, I just, I keep to myself a lot. I just don't want to be in, you know, in front of people. I just don't feel like it's, I feel like I might be wasting somebody's time if I do. Like, nobody really wants to listen to what I have to say, kind of thing. Kind of like mom, you know, not wanting to listen right. to what I have to say. Anyways, so, it, we're in this big circle, and of course it traumatizes me. I tried getting up four times, but somebody else always stole the mic before I got to it. So I got, kept just getting my adrenaline rushing, my body kept shaking even more and more and more until I actually got to the point where like, I actually jumped up there as soon as I got the chance to. Okay. So finally, as I did, I explained the fact that when we went through the one with the parent, the parents, um when we went through the one with the dads uh-huh the exercise the yeah the exercise mm -hmm. it told you to you know to breathe in and breathe out and you know close your eyes listen to the music and let everything go that you have a grunge against your dad or mm -hmm. something that you're upset about you know mm -hmm. so i go and i you know i breathe in and all these emotions just come out of me and and i feel dad so present to me that i just can't even explain it and he put these images in my head about when I was little and he would, you know, I think it was just only once, but I don't really remember, but he um, showed me how to dance and he was a lot taller than I was, so I stood on his feet and held his hands as he walked around while the music was playing and, you know, was being really cute and everything like that. And then he also put the image of, like, you know, the 25-second game. And you like how people like that game? Like yeah, like when I explained to everybody, it was just laughing and, you know. They're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I just saw these little images of him, not when he was sick and not when he was, you know, sad, but when he was happy and when we did get to connect. But I also got that one, the very last one, when I actually got to lay with him when the, the day that he went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. When he had all of us going to the... That was the one that came up for you? Yeah, that was the, I think that was the only one that came up for me when he was sick, was that image of him just holding me and making me feel like everything was okay, mm -hmm. you know? 
and he just cried like that was the that time when he just kept bawling his eyes out while we laid with him you know mm -hmm. and I was just like daddy what's wrong you know so right. I explained that to everybody in the classroom and I was shaking shaking so bad I was crying and I was shaking and I was embarrassed and I was dumb <laughs> I felt so dumb and I can't believe I actually went up there like I thought Are I you wasn't. Proud of yourself that you went up there? Oh, yeah, I'm very proud. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad, glad I got did. to expl experience you it. Notice how he wouldn't let anybody else go after, like a couple of people after you. Yeah. If you would have kept procrastinating. Exactly. Like the next person, and then that was the last person to go. Was the person after me? Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got to because then. Calissa, I am so jealous of you. Why? That's an emotion I have. What? I'm just so jealous of. Your personality. Why? Because you have such a friendly personality. Everybody likes you. I get it so much right from off. you, though. Huh? I get it so much from you. My per that's, that's I do. I get everything from you. Whatever. You I'm not even kidding. If you do, then you learn how not to be <laughs> for me. Just the way you are. Like, all those people who I've never even talked to. Maybe they're in your group or something, right? But you'll just go up to him and you'll be like, hi, you know, and hey, Speedy, and you're just so cute and lovable, and you're just, you I think that was like that. You, even when you were a daddy little girl, you were just always the happy and loving one, and I was just, I just wasn't ever, I just wasn't ever you, you know, and that, that upsets me now. It didn't upset me when you were younger, just because you were the other kid, you know, you were the third, I'm the oldest, you know. But now that I look back, I'm like, man, she has got so much going for her. It just makes me feel so jealous. And I and I, I don't like feeling jealous because I think that's a grungy, right? But I don't want you to feel that that being a jealous is a bad thing because you you make me want to be a better person. Do you see? Like, yeah. I want to be nicer to people. I want to beam like you do. You beam. You don't have as much shit covered around your diamond like I do. Do you see that? Yeah. Like, your your diamond shines all the time. When you get really trusting with people, you shine. You so you say you love you, I love you to Vanessa, even. You know, that's difficult for me to even look at her without, oh, you know what I mean? Grinchies. Right. I'm just, I just want to That's why it. when Chris was talking about I needed this class, I didn't feel like I did, and so a lot of the things that they were talking about, I didn't feel like I connected very much with. Right. Like, being angry or being, you know, upset all the time, it's like, I find myself very happy all the time, and maybe that's just, you know, a flake, just covering something over, you know? I feel like that's what I did do, but I, that's who I am, though, in real life I am like that, but it was also, most of the time I did it just to be fake, so that people would start liking me and everything, you know? And I wanted to be there for people. I really wanted to get the most out of this experience. I really did, and I feel like I did. And this is only the third day. We have okay. one more day left. Why don't you call Kurt back? I'm going to... Sleep. I'm going to... Sleep. Read to the camera my journal entries. Okay. And you're going to... Why do you need to read to the camera your journal entries if you already have them in journal? Because one day, these might be burned or in the flood. Why would they be burned? I'm not saying they will be, but some people don't go and look for papers to read. They just pop in a videotape and want to know our experience. Okay. Are you going to read yours to me? No. When you get done with Kurt? Hi. Right. Okay, well, if she doesn't want to, that's okay. I'm just... I want to. I want to. for the past uh, three days.
Okie dokie, Smokey. Okie dokie, Smokey. That's me, guys. This is me, tired, crying all day with makeup.